The Global Airline Service is one of the world's largest and most profitable commercial sectors, with a market value of approximately 9 trillion US dollars. It comes as no surprise that Airbus and Boeing have dominated the industry for more than three decades. Due to substantial strategies that make it difficult for rival companies to come into the game, the duopoly has nearly dominated 99% of the worldwide market for big commercial airliners. Their quest to be the ultimate duopoly is affecting everything from the airline manufacturing sector to the aircraft you travel or to which routes you choose to travel from. In this video, we will look at how the Airbus Boeing duopoly came to be and how it has dominated the aviation industry. Welcome to Wealthy Mindset, where we explore unique and breathtaking angles from the world of money, economics, personal finance, and investing. But before we dive into it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, click on the bell icon right there so you never miss any of our subsequent videos. For more than a century, Boeing has been a major participant in the aviation sector. In 1916, the Boeing Company was founded when William E. Boeing established Aero Products Company and built a single-engine seaplane in Seattle, Washington. During World War I, the manufacturer supplied its aircrafts to the Navy. In the 1920s and 1930s, it kept selling aircraft to the U.S. Army. Boeing's Aviation and Transportation Corporation was involved not only in manufacturing airplanes, but was also concerned with the airline operations. Boeing subsequently expanded further into the airmail sector. In 1958, with the advent of turbojets, the Boeing 707 was unveiled to the public, and it was quite well received. Well, unlike Boeing, Airbus had a little challenging route to success. Airbus was introduced into the game as a sort of challenge to the Boeing monopoly. It began as a cooperative effort across Europe to combat American manufacturers. In 1967, Germany, France, and the United Kingdom agreed that integration in the aviation sector would enhance European technological and economic progress. Thus, they devised concepts for a short-haul European Airbus to fulfill the public's urge to travel more for less. The A300 was planned to be implemented, and in October of 1972, it successfully had its first flight. By the end of 1984, Airbus received 411 orders and had 282 aircraft in operation. Here, a quick glimpse at the figures can reveal how the persistence paid off in the years ahead. Airbus supplied 800 aircraft in 2018, an increase of 11% over the previous year of 2017. Despite obvious global problems, Airbus supplied 611 aircraft to airlines in 2021, which A320neo and A321neo made up the majority of deliveries. While with 806 commercial planes delivered in 2018, Boeing set a new record for the most aircraft deliveries, up to 5.6% from 2017. The company's dominance has been very well represented in the stocks as well. In 2021, Boeing delivered 340 planes, with the 737 MAX accounting for the majority. Moreover, specialized cargo aircraft accounted for 65% of wide bodies supplied to airlines. The ultimate question here is what it takes for Airbus and Boeing to dominate the airline economy. Well, we are all aware of how expensive it is to manufacture these planes. To be a viable competitor, aircraft companies must have the financial resources to invest in capital, technology, expertise, and customer relations and other aspects, among many other things. Boeing has a 777X series of planes, and with a single 777-9 having a list price of 388.7 million US dollars. This is due to the fact that an aircraft has hundreds or even thousands of parts. Can you believe a Boeing 747 comprises approximately 6 million pieces in total? Not just that, but safety and protection also comes at a price. Globally, commercial aircraft transport more than 3 billion people each year, with less than 1% of passengers dying in most years, and achieving that degree of assurance which comes at a high cost. But the dilemma is, why can't more companies enter the competition? Bombardier, a Canadian corporation, and Embraer, a Brazilian company, were formally recognized as having a monopoly on the markets for regional flight. Later, regional aircraft makers like Bombardier found themselves unable to cover the company's operational expenditures. And in just a few years, Airbus gained a majority stake in the Bombardier C-Series, renamed it as a new A220, and delivered 120 former C-Series aircraft to U.S. airlines in 2018. Boeing, on the other hand, offered $4.2 billion for 80% of the Embraer commercial aircraft company. In 2016, regional aircraft deliveries accounted for less than 7% of the total value of the aircraft market. Russia and China have also been striving to establish themselves as major participants in the aircraft manufacturing company, but have not been capable of breaking into the private, closed, and saturated market controlled by this duopoly. 
supersonic aircraft will undoubtedly play a significant role in the future. In terms of Boeing and Airbus, both companies claim to be focused on exploring various breakthrough technologies in the future, notably supersonic and hypersonic travel. Although the destiny of the aircraft manufacturing sector is unpredictable, one thing is certain. According to the International Air Transport Association, the amount of people flying might double to 8.2 billion by 2037, and Airbus and Boeing are well-placed to capitalize from such key developments. They have indeed contributed in providing travelers with much more frequent and safe services, increased number of destinations, and a greater route flexibility, while also decreasing prices and reducing pollution. And who knows what's going to happen next? If you enjoyed this video, slap a like on it and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with the latest business trends and interesting facts. You can also turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of our mind-blowing videos. We'll catch you in the next one. Until then, bye!